Have you heard about the Sha Muta job, the legendary heist that Rockstar removed from GTA 5 before release? Of course you have, but in this video I'm offering something new. Rockstar surprisingly left behind a lot of stuff from this deleted heist scattered amongst the game's files, but this video is the first to put it all back together. I mean, why should we let the visual assets, character animations, guiding waypoints, and voice lines that they accidentally left behind just go to waste? CLOWNS! Like in some cases we only have the audio, but fortunately for me the legendary silver finish was willing to come along and make some visual assets to go with it. Despite that, you have my assurance that the vast majority of what you're about to see is pure Rockstar and you're going to see cut content that you've never seen before. As the Shah Muta job was sliced out of the full game, they obviously had to make some changes to parts of the story and dialogue to accommodate that. Despite this, the idea for the heist can still be seen in the release version of the game on the mission Carta Libre. Michael and Trevor have just been asked by Martin to prevent his cousin from testifying against him by shooting down his plane, killing him, and retrieving the documents in his possession. While going to complete this task, Trevor speaks about wanting to perform the Shah Muta job. By the way, I know why you took me there to that guy's house. Understood. Understood what? That he's a terrifying psycho and that you might have that in common? What is it? We gotta work for him. We don't gotta work for anyone, but I read you, man, loud and clear. What are you talking about? All that Aztec stuff. Those weird little artifacts. What? The little fertility statues, whatever. The guy has trouble getting it up. We'll clear two, three million on those. Easy. Perverts will pay anything for hope. The Shah Muta job was to see the gang rob Martin's estate, and in order to cut it out of the game, Rockstar changed the dialogue between Trevor and Michael to have Michael reject the idea. Trevor's talk about Aztec fertility statues was also likely a change, as these statues seem to be absent from Martin's home. Instead, his wall showcased his horse obsession, which as you will see, more fits the cut heist idea. We weren't casing the joint. The guy lives well. That don't mean we're robbing him. But it does mean he's got money to pay people who help him. When the time comes, he'll do the right thing. If he don't, please, let me handle it. You don't get a wife like that without being rich and an asshole, right? The fuck? The original plan was to have Michael and Trevor discover that Martin was looking to sell his property, enabling them to go online and book a house tour with the real estate agents in order to scope the place out to rob. At the agreed upon time, Michael and Trevor were to approach Martin's home and act out the story they had previously given the agents. Their plan was to pretend to be a gay couple looking to purchase a new home to start a family. So, we could use this as the second bedroom. Hmm? Albert! Albert, we could use this as the baby room! Oh, this, this, oh, this I love! <laughs> that picture doesn't come off. There's actually a wall safe behind there. Oh, just like the Von Krastenbergs. Now I've saved the best for last. These gardens are breathtaking. <gasps> ah! Oh, sweetie, come on over here. Oh, let's see what this can handle. Okay, okay, I'll let you boys take her for a test drive as soon as you leave your deposit. This tour reveals not only the location of Martin's safe, but also his prized racehorse worth millions of dollars. We as players were to be given the option of three different approaches for the heist, the first being the clown approach. On the one hand, we're stealing something extremely valuable, and on the other hand, we're doing so while making no trouble and while dressed as, uh, shall we say, the entertainment. <laughs> entertainment? Mm -hmm. Clowns, Trevor. Clowns? Clowns. Motherfucker. Clowns. 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 I'm not dressing up as a clown. Fuck you, I'm not doing it. I guess you'll be retiring now then, huh, Trevor? Hey, welcome to the club. All right, you want a fucking clown? Get me my fucking clown suit, huh? I'll make you kitties laugh. I'll make you fucking cry. That's the spirit. Clowns, baby, get your suits on. Hump it, let's go. Clowns. Clowns, not you. But I like clowns. Through unknown means, the gang has sourced clown outfits and an appropriate vehicle to disguise themselves as clowns that have been hired to entertain the guests at Martin's party at his home. Honestly, I don't know why clowns would be hired. After all, there are no children in Los Santos. But hey, maybe Martin has a fetish. <laughs> Let's do this. Franklin goes to act as a lookout and a distraction, performing various tricks to draw the attention of the guests and guards, which gives Michael the opportunity to sneak inside. 
Once inside, Michael takes out a guard and begins to cut open the safe with a cutting torch. Trevor, of course, is not standing idle. He also breaks away from the party, but he goes to find and take the racehorse. He is unaware that Patricia saw him leave. Michael successfully takes the contents of the safe and moves out to the van. He then signals to Franklin that they need to make their exit. Trevor, however, is confronted by Patricia, who asks what he is doing. With anyone else, Trevor would just take them out, but obviously he doesn't want to harm Patricia, so he merely grabs her, which allows her to scream for the security. In order to flee, Trevor snatches her up onto the horse and rides away, being seen by the already alerted guards who chase after Trevor, Michael, and Franklin. Naturally, the gang escapes from their pursuers. The second option we were to be given for this heist was simply referred to as the night approach. That's why I was getting my handy in. Keeps me mellow. Mellow. That's a mellow ass breath. <laughs> all right, all right, mellow or not, we have got to stay calm. Now, you're gonna be hiking through the back country. The hacker's gonna disable the alarm and pop the safe. All you have to do is avoid security, empty the box, and get the pony. Ah, seems pretty lame to me. Yeah, well, it's safe. All right, we stay calm, walk in, grab the merch, and we make a lot of money. Rather than actually going to Martin's party, the gang decides to go after it has finished and everyone is tired. Franklin drives to the backside of Martin's property in order to drop off Michael so he can sneak over the hill to find and steal the horse. Franklin then drives around the front to drop off Trevor and the hacker. They then approach towards the safe, taking out guards in their way. While the duo is hacking the security system to open the safe, Michael is taking out the handful of tired guards in the area, finding the horse, and then leading it towards the van. Meanwhile, the hacker succeeds in their job, opening the safe and giving Trevor access, but Patricia is resting on the couch and wakes up to notice Trevor stealing from the safe. Trevor, just like in the other approach, is unable to bring himself to harm Patricia, so he grabs her and makes his way out front as guards can be heard being alerted by the noise. This commotion alerts Michael that he no longer has time to reach the van, so left with no other choice, Michael hops onto the horse and flees the scene amongst the shouts from the guards. Trevor, on the other hand, reaches the van, throws Patricia in the back, and gets in as guards pursue. Franklin pulls away and eventually escapes the pursuers. The last option was simply called the High Impact Approach, and it sadly has the least leftover assets of any of the options. We don't even have the pre-heist audio like we have with the other two. Thankfully, we do still largely know what was meant to go down. Just as with the other heists, Trevor, Michael, and Franklin start off with Lester, discussing the job with some banter that showcases the various issues going on in their lives. They then dress up as mimes that have been hired to entertain Martin's guests at his house party. This is of course the same party we see in the clown approach, but it is now far later in the evening. Martin and all the guests are therefore now inside the main room as the event winds down. Given that the gang is expected to arrive, they meet no resistance at the perimeter, and so they easily enter the main room where they pull out their weapons and take everyone hostage. Trevor moves out the back to find and take the racehorse, while Franklin attaches cables from the van to the safe, and Michael keeps the hostages quiet so as not to alert the perimeter guards. Franklin then gets in their van and straight up just pulls the safe from the wall. This loud commotion finally alerts the guards in the outer perimeter that something is amiss and they call for backup. The gang engages in a shootout with the reinforcements, taking them out as the safe and resource are moved into the van. Lastly, Trevor snatches Patricia as they're leaving, warning that no one should follow or else she will be killed, allowing them to escape in the van. As this heist seems like it was never finished, I think this is just, at best, the general idea of what they were going for. If I were to take a guess as to why they gave up on it, I'd say the horse was probably a significant factor. I say this largely because other cut content shows that horses were meant to show up in other places as well, and these missions were also changed and they removed the horses. I also think it might have been a bit awkward as the player to switch between the characters in such a small area to do all the roles. Regardless of why they removed the heist, as we covered previously, in the release version, Michael rejects Trevor's idea to rob Martin, and the kidnapping of Patricia from this heist was moved to instead happen off screen at the end of Card Libre. The fuck has happened? Why do you have his car? Man, that piece of turd, huh? No wonder people are stabbing him in the back. What happened? Cheap bastard. You know, I really don't know why you mess around with people like that, Mike. I mean, really, I Trevor! don't. Answer a fucking question. I asked for a fair day's pay after a fair day's work. Then he kind of got a little angry, so I admit, I'm 
I kind of got a little angry. Did you kill him? What kind of fucking animal do you take me for? No, I didn't kill him. Oh, fuck. But I did kidnap his wife. Oh, no. Oh, shit. What the fuck did you do? Oh, I just told you what I just did. Now, oh, shit. Uh, unfortunately, I think that we're going to have to lay low for a little while oh. while, you know, we discuss things with Martin. Oh, you think? Why don't you hop in the back? All right, now, Patricia, she already called shotgun. Honestly, given how iconic that cutscene ended up being, maybe we were better off having the heist removed. Do you agree? I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best. Clowns!